All right, once again, I'm joined by Mark Upton, uh, the Coaching Science Manager from EIS. Um, thanks again for joining me. No problem, Brian. Um, all right, so today I wanted to talk about affordances. Uh, so it's one of the key words um, you know, that you hear a lot with, uh, associated with ecological dynamics. Um, but, uh, you know, I think for those who aren't heavy into the research or the science behind it, um, you know, it's not something that's typically thought about, uh, you know, at least in terms of the word affordances, mm, uh, mm. and maybe even how the concept is used. Uh, yeah. so can, can you possibly, you know, explain affordances a little bit and maybe, uh, practically what it means for a coach? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and it is an interesting question. I've even been sort of, uh, I guess, critically questioned about is is the term relevant? What does it add that we don't already know, or how does it help? I, I, I think it, I think it is. So the term was initially coined by James Gibson. So this is along the ecological psychology that we've taught before and direct perception, which was Gibson's idea. So he, he admits that there was no no term. Um, for it, so he, he just created this idea of affordances, which, in in simplest terms, are really invitations or opportunities for action or to act in an environment. So, um, for example, an, a chair affords sitting on, um, but it could also afford standing on, or it could afford, depending on the height of it in relation to my height, it could afford crawling under, for example. So it's again it's the relationship between the person and the environment, what they bring, right. their their characteristics, their capabilities, and, and what the environment actually offers. So again, if we bring that into a team sport context, if you know if I can throw a, a football 60 yards, then uh, an, an, an offensive player who's free 60 yards away, that's an affordance for me. But for a young player, they only throw 30 yards. That's not an affordance. Right. And over time, we learn to tune in and perceive the affordances. And obviously, they're, they're constantly changing. So as my characteristics change, either short-term or long-term, so as I get fatigued in a match, actually my, my capabilities change, so potentially the affordances change as well. Um, but the idea being that they're, they're very much about action and so learning and becoming attuned to them and acting on them is, again, very much an implicit thing. It's not a verbal, necessarily a verbal thing that I explicitly know and can talk about. Okay, so from a coaching standpoint, then it seems like uh, if we want players to be able to attune to these perform or affordances, we simply need to design an environment that yeah. incorporates them. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one of the key key ideas around ecological dynamics. And again, someone like Keith Davids would talk about that a lot of coaches role as a learning designer, practice designer. And part of that design is how do we design in these affordances for action. Um, so, for example, you know, again, if penetration is a key principle of most invasive sports, how do we design in different the affordance the affordance to penetrate to, to play a, a pass forward um, and then, you know how can we make that at times a really obvious affordance and a really inviting one and then other times actually there's a smaller gap and it's and it's a bit you know more touch and go whether that gap does afford passing passing through um, and, and penetrating with for any for example. All right, so uh, the concept. I imagine is important for coaches to understand, um, but is the terminology important to really dis distinguish between an affordance and, or is there more practical terminology that coaches typically use that essentially hmm. talks about or uh, you know yeah. incorporates some of the same same ideas, mm. Um, mm. you know, so that we're not you know, trying to reinvent the wheel or talk about separate things and confuse yeah. things even more, you know, because yeah. um, obviously affordances isn't a term that you hear coaches use. No, but no. But I imagine many coaches use the concept, you know, they're creating, yeah. you know, they design a drill because they want to practice penetration or they want to, you know, practice. And, and so they're using the concept. Um, yeah. So is it just something that, you know, coach sees a problem, 
and mm -hmm. you know wants to solve a problem and that's essentially mm -hmm. getting at the same thing as as the mm -hmm. idea of affordances or is it yeah. you know maybe something beyond that or yeah it's a good question i don't, I don't know what you think brian whether you can that, that's why it's an interesting one because you think oh there's probably more layman terminology that gets used but then you sort of think closer and i don't know if there is you know whether it is you know we talk about opportunities to penetrate right. or opportunities to press triggers but again, it's a little bit, a little bit different. Um, yeah, I think it, it, it does have some. Yeah, I think it has some merit. And actually, I found that some coaches that, for whatever reason, have latched on to using it. Actually, oh, really? get quite comfortable with using that terminology, and it just, you know, yeah, it really resonates with with them. So, um, yeah, it, it, I think the the key thing for me is these affordances are. It's not you don't learn them by talking about them. Right. You learn it by doing it, by acting in an environment, becoming perceptually attuned, becoming calibrating it with your own capabilities and action capabilities. So it's very much a learn. For me, the take home is it's learn by doing more so than, you know, talking about it or sort of verbal exchange. And, you know, that's is a very ecological approach. All right. Great. Well, thank you again for joining me. Not a problem. All right.